Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. As you can see, we're getting in a bit deep here. Um, back wheel is off. I'm going to show you exactly what we're going to do in here in a second. It's mainly all inside here and I'm going to just basically explain what's going on with that transmission. So, uh, that's kind of it really. That's what this video is going to be about. Um, yeah, we'll get stuck into it. Okay, so basically you're looking at the transmission of the tractor here. Um, down as far as there and up as far as there. This all this isn't part of it, this all it comes off it. And you if you take off your step and take off your wheel, you can wheel all that out there. All you basically have to do is take off some of that pipe work and rip your ring of bolts all around um transmission housing. We have a frame made up clamps on there sits on that fellow up there and this fella here and you can take the whole lot out there and uh work on us on a bench basically um what we're doing is we have an air problem she's air aerating after she starts and while it's causing the tractor no problems I don't want it to cause the tractor any problems so we're going to sort that before it becomes an ongoing issue and where I think the issue is is here because last time we had this transmission out we had no gasket so we made a gasket and these bolts loosened in the meantime and when they were re-squeezed it sort of kind of I will say half cured it so we're going to fit the proper gasket and talk them bolts and I hope that will fix the problem um basically it's something very slight so we're going to make a start there i know there's a slight weep here so i have that proper washer and i'm going to change that and basically any other bits and pieces of o-rings or seals or anything around this area are going to get changed now and this is what i would call preventative maintenance so we're probably going to hear a lot of that word because we try and do a lot of that this time of year um, you can always get it right, but we'll try our best. Okay, so what I've just showed you is basically the flip side of this. I showed you these ring of bolts. These ring of bolts are around here, all the way around this frame. And this is what's on the back of the frame. You have your stepper motor. And this is your input shaft off of the engine. Your engine drive is coming straight through here. It's driving the transmission. Your stepper motor is attached to that. Sorry, your input into your stepper motor is attached to that, and your output is onto the transmission drive, which is going through your planetaries and your dog clutches. The difference between a Steyr transmission and most of the others is the dog clutches. Most use packs. A TM, for example, or a DynaShift Massey is a pack system this is a dog clutch system this is also a vario transmission which means your speed is infinite infinitely variable from zero to 50 around 50 kilometers we'll say 50 kilometers an hour that means there is absolutely no interruption in drive from zero to 50 you can infinitely change that without an interruption so basically there's two main features in these transmissions that weren't out or i suppose these transmissions these were the first of these transmissions which is your cvts um you let me think about what i'm going to say in here now for a second yes um nobody had made a cvt transmission at this stage the styles were the first of the cvt transmissions they were launched in 1999 they featured APM, which is, uh, I don't know what it stands for, Active Power Management or something like that. Basically what it's doing is it's linking your engine software with your transmission software. And the whole tractor is speaking to each other. So, in layman's terms, she, the engine can control the transmission or the transmission can control the engine, vice versa. That is a feature that Fint didn't come out with until around 2002 or 2003. So they were well ahead of the game. 
on that aspect in a fint it's known as tms and these it's known as apm which is the case term for us new holland don't have a term for us and Steyer call it estronic um another feature on them was active hold active hold is a serious feature what it basically does is your stepper motor which is here turns this gear at the exact opposite speed that the engine is turning this one so what it does is it puts your transmission at standstill so if you were on a fairly steep gradient and you take your foot off the pedal tractor comes to stop it will not roll backwards or will not roll forward depending on if you're facing downhill and that is to do with this your engine is driving this shaft your stepper motor is driving this one at exactly the same speed this one is turning it's turning this one so your transmission is effectively not moving um what else can i go into about this your basically what it's doing is your clutch your dog clutches are your gears your planetaries are taking up the variables between the gears at four different ranges your drive is a hundred percent mechanical that means you have absolutely no input from the stepper motor whatsoever the engine is driving the whole lot and your stepper motor is effectively doing nothing I can't remember exactly the speeds that does this, is, but I know one of them is 50k and I think the other one is around 8k, but I, I, like I say, I can't remember um, the exact speeds of them. So basically, you have a totally seamless drive throughout the range, and that is the basics of a CVT transmission. Your engine is driving this shaft, your stepper motor is taking up the variations because it's going to spin this gear at different speeds depending on what the engine software is telling this or the transmission software both of them linked together are telling this gear what to do and that in turn is spinning your whole transmission um like i said the difference in these is the dog clutches they lock if you hear one of these tractors under pressure you can actually hear them change gear you will feel nothing, but you can just hear the clunk of the dog clutches locking in. Uh, they're pretty good not to lose power through their drive. I think, like I say, you have 100% mechanical drive at, um, at 50k. I think the best efficiency a Fint has is 60%. I could be totally wrong on that. That's only, that's, look, that's, a, that's not an educated... Um, i'm only going basically off of information i have not not off of what should i call it uh totally correct information um so that's the basics of um these transmissions the stepper motor gets a lot of bad press mainly because on the early models it failed prematurely uh, i'd say it probably done around three thousand four thousand hours before it failed on the first year or two of production um Definitely your tier 2s and your tier 3s would have a different, uh, st basically a stronger stepper motor. But a lot of them got uh, modifications to fitted to them and uh, it cured that problem. I think a stepper motor to buy it outright is probably around three or 4,000 euro. I know you can get them repaired fairly easily um, throughout Europe. There's a couple of places doing them. You're talking somewhere in the region of seven or 800 euro. Other things to go, um, you have basically here... This silver lead is uh, a speed ring and you have a sensor reading off of that speed ring. There's tiny little allen key studs holding them and what can happen is the allen key studs can fall out and they go in between these gears and basically they destroy these fellas. Um, I've never been into this part, part which I've been done. back here. We've done a bearding back here, which we didn't need to do, but... Um, Kind of when we were in there, we done basically the kind of easily accessible stuff. So we kind of checked over most things and um, we just kind of basically made sure everything would be okay. Um, I got this part. This happened mine. These studs came out. They went in here and uh, they ate um, teeth on the 
outside gear here, the yellow fella, which um, was quite an expensive part if you were to go through main channels. To, you know, there's a couple of different ways of going about it. If you go through a dealer, this stuff is ferociously dear. There's um, independent ZF specialists that you can get the stuff off, which is half the price again. Luckily enough, I was able to get them second hand and they were absolutely perfect. Uh, so we got away handy enough at that. You have these green pins going through here, which kind of lock into this. You see, there's a, a slit out of them. And uh, they lock onto that um, plate. There's a little thing that goes over it and, and bolts them in. It's probably a bit of a flaw in them, really, because that pin can ever so slightly twist like that. And anywhere there's a bit of movement, obviously, wears. So even from new, they were a bit susceptible to wearing there. And um, also another thing to be careful of is... Um, you have a, a nut back here, which is a, it's a very peculiar thing because it only takes three newton meters of torque to tighten it. Which anybody without a workshop manual would squeeze it because you obviously you're just going to squeeze a bolt or a, a nut. You're not going to leave it that loose. I mean, three newton meter is basically not a lot more than finger tight, I would say. So. If you over squeeze that, um, I was recently talking to a mechanic in a dealer that would be fairly good at these. He said if you over squeeze that, it can actually burst this and obviously you're in a fairly big trouble then. Um, you have your pump. This is your motor and this is your pump. It, these pumps can fail, but it's extremely rare and them pumps are a ferocious price if you're to go through main channels again. Uh, you're over 10,000 for one of them pumps. But, like uh, like I say, uh, you know, and I think it's an Irish thing. People love the bad story about, oh, this your cost such and such to fix. Yes, it's, it's expensive if you go through the main channels, but there's means and ways around everything. I've seen these advertised for two and a half thousand. The whole lot, the stepper motor and the pump, um, reconditioned or new, just not through the main channel. So there's a way, ways and means around every problem you will face, and that just doesn't go for these. It goes for everything. Uh, you just need to think outside the box and maybe not panic and do your research into things before you bite the bullet obviously sometimes you have no choice but um most of the time you have a way around it um that's kind of basically a description of how this transmission works uh that's kind of my knowledge of it anyway i know there's people going to know more about it than i do and they'll be able to explain it a bit better but um that's as much as I can explain to you, unfortunately. But if anyone knows any more, please drop it in the comments and uh, let us know. There's a valve outside. It's um, I'll show it to you when we go out there again. And basically, it's on your out. You have two pumps outside. One pump bolted to the transmission does all your hydraulic functions, your steering, your lift, uh, and your spools and all that. That's driven straight through here. And on the inside of that, there is your low pressure pump. Um, there's a little piston on that, and it controls your pressure. Uh, if that piston wears excessively, your pressure can fluctuate up and down. And uh, if she dips below 28 bar for a short period of time, she will she won't let you drive, which. There's so many uh, safety features in these tractors, basically, they're not harm themselves. They're also so well filtered, and their oil isn't communal, as in your transmission oil is your transmission oil. It's doing absolutely nothing else. Um, your your two, um, what shall I call them, your two half housings have their own oil, and your hydraulics has its own oil. So they're uh, kind of totally sealed off from um, external harm and they are very well filtered. Uh, you have a seriously fine, uh, I suppose, gauze you could call it in your filters or microns is the correct term. Uh, they're very fine microns so usually if there's any crap they will catch it. 
uh, anyway about your valve uh, drip dropping below 28 bar that was a problem on the early ones the valve wasn't hardened or the piston i suppose you call it it's about that lint um the piston wasn't hardened it wore excessively fairly quick and when it ran out of travel you were dropping pressure there was a recall on them at the time you could have got the hardened valve put in and you would no more problems but if you missed the recall you can't buy them valves now anymore um they're they're not they're not a complex thing it'd be very easy to get them made and get them sent off to be hardened um so but if anyone runs into that kind of trouble basically if your pressure is fluctuating flat out um check that valve check if your if it's worn excessively i'll show you where it is in the tractor it stops a lot of them from driving and people don't necessarily know where to look so it's kind of one of the easiest places to start straight away and um we'll show you that outside so that's kind of a basic description of the transmission any questions please ask well i've just taken apart that valve there to show you um that's the head of it that sits down there you have a spring as well that i've over in the bench just trying to keep this stuff a bit clean and this is your piston as you can see there's a a slight dimple in the head of it and that's because whatever it's running on inside there is that shape it's a it's a round shape so this has stopped many of them many of the early models running or driving um and like that's that's not a hard thing to get made there's not not a whole pile to that to be fair so um it's just uh, just basically showing uh, like i it's 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 commonly happened that people have you know changed things that haven't needed to be changed when it's something small like this so i'm just kind of really explaining sort of ins and outs of small little bits of knowledge i've gathered and if anyone i've been talking to a few lads now that are involved in cvx's and they've been watching this channel so it's just something to keep in mind that if she's dropping pressure, could be that That you don't need to go change her stuff unnecessarily. Give a look at him first. He's a good one, even though he's slightly worn. Um, a guy sent me pictures recently of one that was worn, it was nearly worn down to that thing, and she was giving trouble. So, um, just said I'd show you that while I was this close. Um, I'm going to put that back together, and this will probably be the end of this video because. Uh, I'm not going to do a whole pile more this evening. I'll probably publish this tonight because uh, last night's video didn't attract a whole pile of views. So we'll kind of keep the whole thing going and, and, and keep the views up and all that kind of thing. So that's basically it for me. Thanks everyone for watching and we'll see you when I'm doing the rest of this. It'll probably be the next video and uh, lots more to come. So yeah, thank you.